of the uh, Carmen Electra spinning professional uh, pole dance pole. And I've never danced on one before. I know very little about it, to tell you the truth. Um, I'm not a fan of it because it has plastic parts. And I use um, both no brand and X poles in my studios because uh, I find them to be the most sturdy and affordable poles. However, um, a lot of people use this, and so I'm just curious, what are the differences? What's the difference between this, between a no-brand regular pole, uh, between an X pole, and is it worth the money? So uh, I'm going to open it up today and install it in my house right here, and we're going to find out together. Um, right now, I'm going to first take down my pole that I have currently installed in my house, and then we're going to install this one in its place. I'll be right back. Okay, so I got my regular pole that I have in my house down, and now we're gonna put this spinning Carmen Electra professional pole kit in its place. Um, it says it has a DVD, hand carrying case, storage bag, stuff like that. And the only thing I've ever heard of these poles, I know very little about them to be honest with you, um, I really avoided them, like I said, because of the plastic parts. The one and only thing I've heard about it is that one of my students recently in my class um, bought an affordable no-brand pole for me, and she said she bought this one first. And the girl who had bought it, um, she was a heavier girl, and I know this pole is um, rated for 220 pounds. So um, if you're planning on doing any extreme fitness on it or a lot of swinging or you're a heavier girl you're not really tiny and light um, and a lot of girls who do pole fitness are not I don't know that I would recommend this because of the 220 pound rating on it so that's the first difference that I do know um, okay so we have pieces I'm just going to unbox all this it comes with a DVD Looks like an assembly guide. Uh, pole parts. Okay. So first off, I can tell you that um, the difference between an X pole and my affordable no brand pole is that this is much lighter and much thinner metal that it's constructed of. Um, I can't speak for the sturdiness of it because I don't know, but um, my other poles, this one, it looks like it slides together. Oh, this pole, this piece is heavier. Oh, it's got a piece in here that looks like it moves. Okay, so this must be their extension piece. Um, looks like it screws outward. I'm not going to do anything because I don't know. But we have three pole pieces. Little kit, wrench thing, uh, some string, just looks like assembly parts, and of course the handy bag. Okay. instructions so I don't bore you and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I, um, what I did is I watched the DVD that came enclosed 
and it was actually really informative and um, pretty easy to follow, I feel. I felt like it was a um, great informative uh, DVD, and in fact, um, if I was a new person, there is things that they mentioned on their assembly DVD in terms of safety that should be mentioned in other name brand installation videos. It's not in terms of um, how to use your pole correctly, and there's not many, but it's just a very well done DVD. I'm quite impressed. I did notice on the cover, though, that when I bought the box, it said that it was going to take 220 pounds, but there's this little sticker note on the top of the DVD that says, oh, by the way, it'll only take 200 if you use, um, if you lengthen the pole out really far. Now, this pole goes from uh, Seven foot four to eight foot seven, I believe. So, meaning if you are using a ceiling height that is close to eight foot seven, your pole is only going to take 200 pounds, not 220. So, I thought that was rather deceiving. I didn't like that part. I would have rather known before I bought the pole. Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and install this. I learned um, that you're also going to need a screw gun, stud, stud finder. Screws do not come in the kit and you will need them and I thought that was, um, you can go to any local hardware store and get them, um, although this is a confusing part because a lot of girls don't know what to buy. Just so you know in case you're installing it, um, I have here about two inch um, screws, they're gold, uh, they call them gold diggers um, in the carpentry field if you want to know. And um, it's going to screw this top plate right here. There's four screws in it and it's going to screw to the ceiling. Two of those screws need to hit a joist. Um, you'll hear a loose term running around that you should hit a stud. Studs actually go in walls, but either way, you have to hit a wood structure up there. The screws have to screw into it. Two of them do, and then the other two will go into um, you know, plaster board or whatever else ceiling type that you have. So the studs have to be installed underneath a joist, so do know that and um, you find the ceiling joist with a stud finder. And I do have a separate video on how to use a stud finder to find ceiling joists, because um, I have installed videos for other poles, uh, for my affordable no brand and the X pole. So if you, you could use that same video to find the stud to install your um, Carmen Electra pole. Okay, so um, the tape measure here is basically to measure your ceiling height. I felt like this was girly. <laughs> I guess we're doing a girly sport, but um, you have to climb up onto a ladder and then, you know, have somebody hold it, read the bottom of the tape. I much prefer a carpentry tape. They're um, long, a regular one. I happen to know that my ceiling is eight foot tall. You might want to measure that to be sure that you're not over eight foot seven or below seven foot four before you begin your installation. So what I'm going to do is I'll be right back. I'm going to use my handy dandy screw gun. gun my stud finder, my screws, and I'm going to put this top plate on my ceiling like the instructions said to, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've assembled the dome on the ceiling like they said and used two screws to put it into the ceiling joist. Now, um, the only comment I have about the dome is that there was a foam type rubber backing on the back of the dome to kind of help it seat in place, and then the screws are actually really secure. I like the secureness of the screws uh, versus the uh, removable portable poles. They don't use screws at all. They're still very secure, but there's just something more secure about a permanently installed pole, and I like that. Um, it's also a smaller piece, which I like. I hate that it's plastic. It annoys me that it's plastic. There is a metal bearing in it, but that's the only metal piece. The rest is plastic, and plastic just breaks. I don't know why they couldn't have used metal. So here's a dome for uh, a, uh, this is an x pole dome, but my affordable no brand domes look very similar. And, uh, and as you can see, this is a removable portable pole, and I like this better in that um, it doesn't put holes in my ceiling, and I didn't have to use a screw gun. I really wasn't happy about putting holes in my ceiling. They are patchable, though. You put a little caulking in them when you're done. Um, but it's definitely permanently up there. Um, the domes on these, they have like the um, rubber backing on the back of the dome also, but this is a more quality rubber by far than what was on that one. However, since that one's permanently installed, you're not going to need that quality of rubber on the back of the dome. And as you can tell, these domes are much larger because they're meant to span 
uh, two ceiling joists. And um, of course, that one doesn't need to because it's screwed in. So that would be the difference between a dome, a good, affordable, removable dome, or a portable dome, I mean, uh, pull in, you know, the Carmel Electric. Also, I noticed that um, these extensions for the Carmen Electra, as you notice, I have an extension here. This is for my uh, affordable no brim pole extension. And as you can tell, <clears throat> this one's a lot more solid and stronger. There's so many joints in this Carmen Electra pole. The joints is really what makes the pole weak. You want as least amount of joints as possible. And when they do go together, you want the joint to be very thick like the metal to be thick because that's its weakest point. And um, I'll give you a picture of this. But as you can tell, um, the metal inside of the affordable no brand pole and this Carmen Electra, there is a stark difference. This is much more solid, much more sturdy. Um, this can hold a lot more weight. This kind of worries me. The thinness of this metal really worries me, but we'll see when I do a pole spin on it. Um, in comparison to an X-pole, the X-pole um, extensions are thinner, but they are definitely thicker than the Carmen Electra. So you are getting what you pay for in terms of quality metal. And um, the reason that the X-poles have a thinner metal is because they're so secured together by the solid metal X-joint and it really fills up the inside of the joint with solid metal. There is no joint support in this whatsoever other than what you see right here. That's just not good quality in my opinion, so. Um, but for light use, maybe. So we're gonna put this together. Um, we have um, the middle piece, which is this one. Let me get it to sit there. This one is the um, bottom piece that the foot goes onto, and it has all of the locking nuts so that you can uh, screw the pole up or down and adjust the height on the bottom. So I'm gonna slide this base onto the bottom and then put my middle pole together. They just slide together. Um, this is the top piece. You can tell this smaller piece is going to go up into the dome. Very similar to the, um, you know, the no brand poles or the X pole. They all have this piece that sticks up that goes into the dome. It's very common. Only this is totally plastic, and this, I'm not a fan of plastic. It breaks. I'm just not. We'll see. It seems like a sturdy plastic, I guess, with these little locking nuts that are metal on it. It looks like it could break pretty easy, so. We'll see. So put it in, um, slide this on, the little knock locking nuts, they lock into the side of the pole, and then you slide the, um, oh, the next step in the instructions was to unscrew this top. This part I liked. On the top, you're going to see the different ceiling heights. And since I know my ceiling height is 8 foot, then you screw it out to, um, the length that fits your um, ceiling height, so you know how far to extend this out in advance. Now, it says 2.4, 2.38. I don't know what that is. It doesn't say 8 foot like a normal ceiling. I have to read here and find out what that means. Okay, it says unscrewing extend the top piece so the height indicator displays your ceiling height. Okay, well my ceiling height is 8 foot and there is no 8 foot mark on this, so maybe I don't like this. Um, I don't, it didn't say in the video either, so I'm not really sure how far to extend this out, to be honest with you. Um, we'll just try 2.4. I'm not sure. I kind of expected a grid like maybe that the 2.4 mark might equal an 8 foot ceiling. I'm not seeing that in here, so maybe I missed it or something. Who knows? So we'll try that. Um, I know the goal from experience with most poles is that this is easily slipping apart. You wouldn't get that with 
the joint on a good sturdy no brand or an expo, the joints wouldn't slide apart that easy. So you kind of got to hold them together as you lift the pull up. Um, so the goal of these is to use as much ceiling height with, and this goes for all pulls, with the extensions and use the least amount extending it out on the extender bar. So I'm going to put this up in there. As you can tell, it looks like it's maybe four inches or so away from the ceiling. So I'm just going to extend mine out just a little bit more. Maybe to 4.4 or something. We'll try that. Ooh, my parts come apart pretty easy. This is where they said to have a friend hold it up for you. And I definitely see why they'd want a friend to do it because you got to hold all these pieces together. They just slide right apart. Uh, so, um, next is to extend the height of the pole upwards and you hold on to the pole because it's in spinning mode when you install it. And you turn the bottom clockwise until it um, tightens. Now they also said that on the bottom of the pole, which I started to like, was um, you could watch for your ceiling height and then just tighten it up to your ceiling height. But again, I don't... 2.4. I don't get how that's 8 foot. I don't know. So I'm kind of confused on that one. And then before you tighten it all the way, you need to be sure that the, um, it's a little wobbly already, <laughs> um, to be sure that the pole is straight up and down. They recommend that you use this little plumb line. Uh, this is kind of a carpentry trick. However, I feel like it's okay. Um, you hold it up and this makes a straight line and then you be sure that your pole is parallel to it, of course. But for me, um, I would rather align it, either use a level, which is what I do with all my pole installs, or you can align it with the four corners of your room. And I can tell that the bottom is uh, crooked. It needs to go this way. So I'm looking straight through the pole and aligning it with the corner. I'm going to do that all four corners, okay? It doesn't matter what pole you buy, an X pole, affordable no brand pole, this Carmen Electra pole, you are going to want to align it from all four corners. This side, that side, this side, and this side because the pole can be unlevel one way and level a different way. And I know that sounds weird. Um, for me, I would ditch this little plumb line and not use it, but of course, you know, your discretion. Because see, it even swings. You gotta stand here and wait for it to get level and then, you know, try it on all sides. Whatever. <laughs> Not using that. Okay. Um, so now that I know that it's level, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up the rest of the way. I'm holding on to the pole so it don't spin and then just tighten this. And it says, clearly don't over tighten the pole because it can, the extension can damage your roof. That happens with all poles, doesn't matter what kind you buy, if it's a good quality. If you put too much extension pressure on this, it could damage your roof and extend it up too high or bend the pole. So you just need to be aware of that. So it's about as tight as I can make it go with my hands. So, I really don't. This plastic doesn't turn well, and my hands kind of hurt from gripping these plastic threads. Um, I know with the other poles, they give you handy tool kits like this. You know, so it's a hand-free thing like these. So, um, and I guess that's what this is for, is to... Um, push this into the side of the plastic and turn it. Although it doesn't fit on there, so you have to do it by hand. Um, so the next, I'm gonna push this up to the top, it said, till it aligns, and then screw this one up. This is similar in that there's a locking nut that holds the pole into place. Um, it keeps it from unwinding from the ceiling so that it's safe. Um, the locking nuts um, on the affordable no brands are on the top rather than the bottom. I do like that you're installing from the bottom rather than the top instead of on a ladder, but they're both very easy. Again, the locking nut on the other poles is metal and this is plastic. 
Um, okay. And then, um, yeah, here's the bars where you could use this little wrench if you want to and turn it to assist your install. I would definitely do that. Hurt your hands if you don't use it. Okay, so um, that considers it assemble, assemble. It's said to hold your body weight on the pole. Be sure it can hold you. And it also said to pull on it. As you can tell, I don't know, it's really wobbly. Like my other poles are not like this. Um, I'm going to try and tighten it up and see if that takes some of the looseness out of it. Okay. Well, I can't tighten it up anymore. My wrench is sliding across the plastic and it's kind of stuck on there. <clears throat> Jesus. So, I can't get it any tighter because the wrench is basically breaking the plastic and it's cutting away the threads so that I can't screw it up any higher. And if I keep trying to force it to turn, the wrench literally rips the plastic threads off. I'll show you a picture of that. So, I'm gonna, yeah, and now, in order to get this locked down, you have to align this plastic piece, and it doesn't align, so I have to unscrew it a bit. Um, oh, good God. I thought maybe I wanted to get installed. Okay, I went too far. Yeah, it's a little, this is some... Um, This 
It doesn't have the same great spin quality or spin smoothness that a better pole does. Um, to do a pole spin, I feel like that was pretty safe, um, just keeping my body weight close to the pole. Again, I don't feel comfortable enough to do something out here by like, you know, jumping and swinging away. I don't feel comfortable doing that, so I'm not going to. I'll test the bearings going the other way though.